price on carbon. I think before the advent of carbon markets, you had carbon being really an unpriced byproduct of industrial processes. People didn't even really think about how much carbon was spewing into the atmosphere from their corporate and personal activities. And really, because we are working in a market society and a capitalist system, that kind of byproduct was not factored into the decisions of companies or. Regulators or, or individuals, but with carbon markets, for the first time, you have a price, an explicit cost that decision makers in companies and individuals will have to take into account because they are compelled to pay for this price in the compliance markets, and there is a willingness to pay for them in the in the voluntary space. So for the first time, you can actually do things like think about the economics of conservation. And the preservation of forests, as an example. Compliance carbon markets are driven almost entirely by regulatory actions, right? And、uh, this has been happening over 20 years. We are talking about market value of about 100 billion dollars worldwide, with a sort of trading turnover of about、uh, 250 billion dollars, right? So these markets are becoming sizable, and they are entirely driven by regulatory actions. This is not one market. There are more than 20 such markets around the world, and we expect 20 more to come online soon, including、uh, recently China、uh, brought one of the emissions trading scheme online, right? So this、uh, space will develop. Now, just to contrast this、uh, with the voluntary carbon markets,、uh, these are still nascent and small. So the total value of these markets is about 300 million today, so a fraction of the size of the CCMs, if you will. But、uh, they've been growing rapidly, right? At least 20% a year for the last. A、uh, few years, and we、uh, do expect that、uh, voluntary carbon markets will、uh, continue to grow and will become as important as、uh, CCM. Asia and Southeast Asia can, I think, can really play a key role to enable global sustainability, because we are really in the middle of a region that has a, a, a great source of natural assets and resources that can help us with、uh, decarbonisation. Southeast Asia can be a source of、uh, credible and high-quality carbon credits because of our potential here as a carbon sink. We have almost 15% of the world's tropical forests, and we contain the world's highest concentration of blue carbon stocks. We also hold the highest potential for added key biodiversity co-benefits, particularly in countries like Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, and others in the region as well. So、um, I, I think there is a real potential、um, for decarbonisation that can be unlocked、um, with the right investments and the right、uh, emphasis on quality. There is also a great opportunity to, I think, build up greater corporate capacity to navigate、uh, climate change. If investors can think about how they can work with their portfolio companies in the region to build up that capacity and build up the, the ability to, to, to make a successful transition. That will also, I think,、um, help to contribute to global decarbonisation. So I, I think, for all these reasons,、um, Asia is where I think uh, uh, I see great、uh, potential and, and great、uh, opportunities for partnership and solutions.